Good evening. You know, I was thinking a good way to start out today is something something that we ever we use every day, some of us do. I bet you that a lot of us have it in our toolbox or something. Today is a WD-40. That's a weird way to start. WD-40. Does anybody know what WD-40 stands for? Water Displacement 40. The 40 is what I'm looking at. It was developed in the military. And the 40 means that, stands for it took them 40 tries. True story. It took them 40 tries to get it right. So that's what the 40 is. Water displacing. 40. Now what it was used for in the military, I can't quite remember, but of course it was something with their uh, machinery and displacing water and it really had a specific thing they needed to do with it. Today's lesson is entitled The Virtue There's a Perseverance. Perseverance is to continue on. How did that relate to WD-40? They didn't stop after 10 tracks. They didn't stop after 20 tracks. They stopped when they got it right, which was 40 tracks. So they put it in the name. A perseverance means to continue on. You continue. And you continue. Why do some people succeed in having the prayers answered? Have a greater understanding of the Bible? Reach more souls for Christ? Is it a skill, genius, or love? The answer, and I'm sorry, I skipped one thing. Our lesson starts from Matthew 7, verses 7 to 11. Sorry, skipped up for failed to tell you what we're starting to read today. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 11. The answer is suggested by Calvin Coolidge. Pray song. Nothing in the world can take the place of perseverance. Talent or not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a, a proverb. And an education will not. The world is full of educated dialects. In verse 7 of Matthew, Matthew 7, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that asketh find, findeth, and to him that knoweth it shall be that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now, verse 9. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks of a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then, if ye then, being evil, know how to give God gifts unto your children, good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us together here again today in your house. We pray, Lord, that in some small way we can take something with us today that will help us in our daily walk of life. Lord, we pray for those who aren't with us today, 
in whatever condition they are in. And pray, Lord, that they will soon be back with us in good health. We pray, Lord, for those who have not accepted you as their Savior, and we pray that they'll come to you and realize the importance of doing so before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perseverance. Verse 7 says, Ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. This verse stresses the emphasis of action. It doesn't say sit around and every good things will come to you. An action is asking, knocking, seeking. This verse indicates that we have to be proactive in our in seeking knowledge and the gifts given by God. Verse 8 is a, a reformation that everyone that asks and seeks shall find. It's a reassurance that those who persist and look will be rewarded. No one succeeds, say, to their fullest potential by sitting around and waiting on it. And that holds true to our relationship with God. We need to be active seekers and doers. To have a full relationship with God. Verse 9 says, What man is there of you who, if his son asks of bread, will he give him a stone? Verse 9 distinguishes that we need to be specific in what we do, what we ask. Uh, and God is specific in what He gives. We need to be clear of what we want and need and also what we will do. In our relationship with God. See, our relationship with God is a two-way street. We receive, but we also must give. So verse 9 clarifies or, or states that if we are having open, an open relationship with God and our needs that we specifically need. Sometimes our wants and our needs are two different things. But our needs will be met. Our prayers will be answered. We have to have <coughs> persistence. We have to continue. Even though it's very difficult at times for us to continue on the road that is laid before us. There's stumbling blocks and pitfalls. There's times when it would be a lot easier just to sit down and not be an active member or proactive member, but to be a follower and a, as, as, a, as 
they borrow wood and they can be a stream, just follow along. We have to be active in our relationship with God. We have, we have to ask. We have to seek. We have to knock. We have to be lookers. You know, one thing about someone that they have accepted Christ, or maybe even if they're a regular church member without accepting Christ, they are lookers. They're seeking something. I say something because they may not know. They, we know what it is, but they may not come to the realization of, I need something. They're seeking. Many people are seeking in the wrong place. And we are very familiar with how that sometimes comes about. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall you your father if will your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Know how to it's Comparing our Father in Heaven with our relationship to our children, we are going to be good to them. We are going to be thoughtful, loving, generous, and verse 11 is a comparison to our relationship with our children, our loving, patient, understanding relationship with our Father which is in heaven. He's loving, patient, understanding and kind. And we know that if our children need something, we will do whatever it takes to help them get that. Now, I, let me qualify that and say need something. Our wants and needs sometimes are two different things. But if they need it, we will see to it that they get it. Or at least know that you have done the best you can do to help them to receive that. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talked about the virtue of perseverance. Especially in relevance to prayer. Video, giving us motivation to persevere in our service to God. We must carry on. We must perse persevere. In rough times and in good times. The principles of, of perseverance it is the present tense which most often stresses continuous action. Literally then, Jesus is saying, keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Now, by this, it indicates that this is not a one-time deal. Which, by that I mean, you're going to seek, you're going to ask, 
and then that's going to be the end of that. I found it, I seeked it, I found it. Let's go on to something else. No, Jesus is saying literally to keep it up. Keep on seeking and keep on asking. It's a lifelong journey. It's not a one-time deal. Yes? Baptizing, baptism, establishes our relationship with Christ. And there's one baptism. But then, our relationship is a relationship of, let's say family. We're in the, in the family then. We have a Father in heaven then that we have accepted as a Father. And by this relationship, we can keep on asking and it will be given to us. And we can keep on seeking and we will find. And let's also qualify that by saying sometimes our time isn't God's time. You know, for everything there is a season. And sometimes we want it and we want it now. Sometimes we don't understand things and we get frustrated. Things happen in our lives that makes us angry, bitter, and all those emotions. But God has a plan for us. And we have to continue our relationship with Christ by continuing to seek, continue to find, and things will be revealed to us. Keep on knocking and it will be open to you. Persistence in our lives will make changes. We know when I use one, one small example of what persistence in our life, in a worldly life, can produce. It can produce great changes. Many, many uh, things have been discovered, developed to help mankind. Many great breakthroughs in medicine, biology, and chemistry, and technology to help mankind because people kept on looking. Oh yeah, there's a lot that we haven't solved. But the bottom line here is they kept on looking <coughs> and we see the results see the results in our own lives of what keeping on doing has done to improve our lives. Well, this holds true with our relationship with Christ. Keep on knocking. Keep it up. Anything that we look at and probably look at as a modern convenience or a something that really helps us probably has had great setbacks in developing. It's probably time when the developer said, oh, what's the use? Oh, what's the use? Henry Ford probably said, hi. We don't hear of the success. We don't hear of all the failures or all the frustrating times. But they're there. And we're going to have them, and we do have them. And 
out of those frustrations, we have to continue with the program of Christ. We don't give up. We keep on knocking. By the progression of the terms themselves, asking is on one level an inquiry. Seeking suggests a step up as one goes about to find what they're asking. Seek, asking is an inquiry or simply asking. Seeking is indicating an action, actually bodily, physically doing something. Knocking is another step up as one persists in finding that, that which they seek. Asking plus, plus, asking plus action plus persevering. That's the plan. Ask. Seek. That's the action. And continue. And continue. With those steps. Persever perseverance is particularly re relevant to the matter of prayer as implied in Matthew 7, verse 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, or how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him. They, your Father in heaven will give good things to those who ask Him. Jesus is often stressed, has, Jesus often stressed perseverance in teaching. In His teachings are prayer. In the parable of the persistent friend in Luke 11, verse 5 to 8, and in the parable of the persistent will in Luke 18, verse 1 through 8, persistence was the key to success. To the matter of Bible study, many people give up too soon in the Bible studies. But those who persevere in their studies are the ones who benefit from the blessings God's Word provides. Quitters never win. And winners never quit. That is a good statement on perseverance. Perseverance. Can I say that word? Perseverance. Continuing. And as we continue with our working on our relationship with God, we will become more confident. We will see that it's working. We will see that prayer is our answer. We will also come to realize that God is in control. God is in control. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> Blessed Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his, forth his fruit in his season. His life also shall not wither. When the, and 
whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now here this verse 3. Well, let's look at this. The, let's start with verse 1. The man that's being described here is someone who walks with God. He delights in the law of the Lord. And he shall be like a tree. Now let's look at this tree. A tree is a very strong, powerful image, if you think about it. He will be strong, and he'll be powerful. He's walking in the ways of the Lord. He's planted by the rivers of, of water that bringeth forth his, forth his fruit in his season. Okay. If this man is planted, this, this man in this tree, man needs to be planted himself in the righteous waters that flows forth from our state. In these, we will have strong roots. We will be grounded in righteousness. And our fruits will be beneficial. And they will come to maturity when God wants them to. In other words, we need to trust our life, will, and lives in God. We need to take the words and the scriptures as this tree takes the water from the stream and let it cause our cells to grow in Christ's blood and Christ's word. And if we do so, our fruit will be good. And our fruit, and the fruit will be the way we live our lives. That's our fruit. The good things we do. Or it can be the bad things we do. But it's the way we live our lives. And as long as we have a good foundation and play it on the good, firm soul of Christ, and the waters of righteousness flows to us, we can't go wrong with the fruit we produce. We will not wither. And what we do, if we do it with the right heart, it will prosper. It will progress. Those 
this isn't in the Psalms, but I'm going to qualify this and say, those who persevere in their studies are the ones who benefit from God, from the blessings God's Word provides. And down to Psalms 119, 97 to 104, Oh love, oh how love, how, oh, how love I thy law it is meditation all the day. Though through the command, commandments has made me, wise, made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from judgments for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey in my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Those who persevere in their studies are the ones who benefit from the belief from the blessings God's words provide. Those who keep it up. To the matter of evangelism, many do not bear fruit because they give up too soon. But we reap what we sow. The more persistent we are in sowing, the more we will eventually reap. If we desire success in any venture, but especially in prayer, Bible study, evangelism, then we must adopt the virtue of perseverance. Perseverance. We must continue despite evil forces that surround us. We must continue despite criticisms and harassment, we're talking on a world scale now, or, or just a national scale, just about, not world scale. And of all those odds, we must be persistent. We must persevere. Matthew 6. Matthew Matthew 6, 31 and 32. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father and know that ye have need of all these things. In these verses, if we are seeking our heavenly Father, these things are known to Him. Let's see. We are our God knows what we need before we know what we need. And once again, we need to realize that God's time is not our time. We want it on our time. But God's time sometimes does not correspond with the way we want things. 
God delights to give things to his children. To, his, to illustrate, Jesus gives a simple argument from the lesser to the greater. That is, men give good gifts to their children who ask. How much more also will our Father in heaven give to us? Jesus stressed this fatherly attribute of God and his servant in regards to our physical necessities, as in verse Matthew 6, verse 31 and 32. Our physical necessities will be met. Our Heavenly Father knows what we need. And our Heavenly Father also knows what we don't need. And sometimes those two things don't jive. We need things that we really, we think we need things that we really don't. We want things that we really don't need. And sometimes things don't work out the way we would like for them to work out. Those are times when we need to let go and let God. Turn it over to God. And now in regards to things that are good for us, Matthew 7, 11, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them? But ask Him. We are God's children. We will receive good things. This is especially true in regards to prayer. As Jesus promised to his disciples, John 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Conditioned upon our abiding in him. Conditioned upon his words abiding in us. This is a promise to his disciples, but it has two conditions. We have to have a relationship with God. That's the underlying fact. We have to have a relationship, a working relationship with God. We have to have God in our hearts and minds. We have to have faith in God. We have to have confidence in God. And we also need to live godly lives. And then the promise to us is your prayers will be answered. But again, sometimes what we think we want, we don't need, we don't get. That's where we have to put our trust and faith in God. As the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desire of Him. Con conditioned upon our asking according to His will, which assumes we know His will for us. His Word is abiding in us. Now this is stating that To put it bluntly, sometimes we know the answer before we ask. Depending on what we're asking in our prayers, sometimes we know that we, you know, we sometimes know our, the, what His will for us is. Because His word is abiding in us. As His Word is abiding in us, we know how we should be living and how we should be thinking. And we sometimes know 
people, how we should, as we should know, all of us, how we should, we should be praying. And as James wrote in James 4, 3, ye ask and receive not, <clears throat> because, now this is important, <clears throat> ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. that ye may consume it upon our lusts. Other, word, other words, we sometimes don't receive because we ask for the wrong reasons. You see, we have to ask ourselves why do we want this? Or why are we asking this? You know, I say want, but you know, we all, it's what we want, but it's not always worldly things. You know, you can be selfish about a lot of things. You know, being selfish, we think, yeah, that means that he wants one of the fancy cars like John or our girl. That's selfish, you know. Or, you know, no, we can be selfish about a lot of things. You know, selfish means, you know, self-centered. Do you really want that, or do you really want this to go about because of the good of people, or the good of the church, or the good of your family, or the good of something, or is it because of the good of you? You know, I'm going to cause it like, you know, it's selfish reasons, selfish gain. But you may, but, but, but many do not enjoy God's favor simply because they do not ask. In conclusion, to persevere in is a noble virtue, especially in regards to prayer. We have a Father in heaven who is not untouched by the persistent pleas of his children, providing we do not ask amiss. Persistent prayers will not go unanswered. If we desire to receive, find and have doors open to us, then let us keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Not only in regards to prayer, but in all ventures worthy of Christians. And we're going to end on a question. Have you recently asked, seeked, sought, or not? And if you have, as it said in our lesson, be persistent. Keep it up. Keep it up. You know, God has not given up on any of us. And there was a time when some people, don't, well, let's say it this way, there are some people that are in a bad situation for whatever reason, either of their own making or whatever. And no matter how bad the situation is, God's not given them. So, we need to be persistent and don't give up. Don't quit. Stand strong. And the best thing we can do for that is to start off right. And that is to establish a relationship with God. The plan of salvation is clearly is written as a direction for those who seek, who ask, who knock. We hear and believe, confess Christ, and be baptized for the remission of sins. Will be open to us. The door.
over and over. And many things that we seek will be there for us. And many of the questions we ask will be answered. And that's what's available to us tonight as we say.